Ok, xin chào mọi người, mình là Phong đến từ Quay 68 và mình đang ở đây ở GM Việt Nam và ngồi cạnh với mình ở đây ngày hôm nay là uh, Alex, là CEO của Nansense Nếu mà các bạn đã đừng ở trong thị trường crypto và follow các thông tin on-chain thì chắc chắn là đều đã biết đến Nansense rồi và trong cái ngày hôm nay thì mình sẽ có một cái buổi trao đổi uh, với uh, với CEO của Nansense để xem coi là uh, chúng ta có thể có những insight gì từ một trong những người gọi là market leader trong cái phân tích on-chain như thế này So, hi Alex Hello How do you feel about everything so far for GM Vietnam? Yeah, it's been great uh, I'm a big fan of Vietnam Um, I've been coming here for the last 10 years, a few times. Last time I was here was in 2019, when I met with the Sky Mavis Axie Infinity team. And so this is my first time back actually since then. So yeah, it's been great. Cool. So yeah, thank you for the introduction. So uh, about, I, I don't think that we need to introduce about Nansen. I think it's pretty much like all the OG in the industry already know about it. Uh, but you come here and present the keynote. Uh, and I'm like, what the hell was people doing on chain in 2024? Uh, but I, I, I'm sure that like not everyone can can have a chance to, to watch uh, the whole of it. So can you like summarize some key points that you're sharing uh, in, in our stay with the presentation? Yeah, absolutely. So I think, firstly, it's important to think about where we are going on a long-term horizon, right? And I believe in a future where every asset is going to be on chain. And so everything's going to be tokenized. Uh, and as a result, you're going to have billions of people who are owners of something. And so to me, that represents the opposite of what you might see in World Economic Forum. Maybe you've seen the meme of you will own nothing and you will be happy. Yeah. I believe in the opposite of that. You will own something and you will be happy. And so uh, the you know blockchains are going to be the financial fabric of the future. And so then I think it's interesting to see where are we on that journey now. It's 2024. We've come pretty far, uh, but you know we have many years of, of building ahead of us. And so some of the themes that I'm interested in right now are, for example, L2s for the Ethereum ecosystem. And we are really seeing uh, a few L2s that are starting to take um, a bit of dominance in the L2 market. Uh, the ones that I would highlight are Arbitrum, which has really grown in daily active users. They have lots of total assets on chain, total value locked and things like that. The next one on the list would be base, where you see um, increase on every metric. And basically Coinbase, I think is just getting started with its distribution engine. And then you have, of course, OP stack, you have Blast. Those are probably the top four with regards to uh, the ones that are having the most activity of all the L2s. But then there's a long tail of other L2s coming to market. Yeah. So that whole category I find super interesting. ZK Sync, Mantle, Linea, lots of these L2s. So that's one thing that you can see very clearly that L2s are now becoming the default way that people are entering the Ethereum ecosystem. It used to be L1, now they're going actually L2 first. And that's pretty exciting. Uh, the next thing that I think is quite interesting is that there are also many other L1s besides Ethereum that are becoming um, quite important in terms of activity. And it's pretty clear that we are now in a multi-chain world, right? We used to say the future is multi-chain, at least I used to say that. I feel like now the present is multi-chain. And so a couple of L1s that are doing super well on growth are Ronin, which we know has a very strong base here in Vietnam with Sky Mavis team here. Uh, we have Near that has now crossed 2 million daily active users. Solana is another one, had a huge comeback, and of course the meme coin trading, yeah. very good UX, very low fees, and so on and so forth. Uh, these are very interesting chains to look at, but also even chains like Tron, which has the majority of USDT, the biggest stablecoin. So, you know, I think like if I would summarize everything, it would be that we live in a multi chain world right now. And that means you have to pay attention to many different ecosystems. And there's a lot of interesting th things happening in each one of these chains. And, and like for, for someone like, as we are amid of the boom market right now, like everything is increasing, uh, there will be like a lot of newcomer that jump into the industry. Like new, I see a newcomer like come every day. So like uh, from your point of view, like as you say, there were a lot of things, a lot of L1s and also L2s. Uh, so where is the, the starting point. What is your advice for people when start dying in, in the on-chain world? What, what else, what other things that they need to know like before starting their journey in crypto and blockchain? Yeah, I mean, I think firstly, we should acknowledge that there's a lot of stuff in crypto that is not worth your while, right? There's a lot of scams, there's a lot of, you know, stuff that you should 
try to avoid, right? So you should always have a critical lens of everything you look at. If some, someone's trying to sell you something that looks too good to be true, it, it probably is. Uh, having said that, it is also an interesting time to be a newcomer in the space because what we're seeing is a lot of airdrops are being given out to people. That means in many cases now, because transaction fees are quite low, you can start playing around with chains, with L2s and protocols, and it doesn't have to cost you very much, and you can actually get, get rewarded for it later. And so I think in a way, you know, you could debate how sustainable this is, but it's actually a pretty good time period for newcomers to come in because you can get rewarded financially in some cases just from using products, right? So, you know, I would play around with most of the Ethereum L2s uh, to, to see how they work and get familiar with them, to get familiar with the basic infrastructure of wallets and, and so on. Coinbase has a new smart wallet product out which is really exciting because it removes a lot of the complexity with key management. Uh, so that's something that's worth looking at. Uh, and then, you know, I think that's probably a good place to start. And then, you know, what I've seen over the years is that the people who are the most successful investing in crypto, they have two different elements. One element is the uh, on-chain, that they look what's happening on-chain. That's what we help them with, right? With our products. The other element is that they have a good social network. And that means they talk to other people who are uh, active in the space. Maybe they talk to some people who are a few years ahead, a few months ahead uh, on the trajectory. And if you have both of those ingredients, in my experience, that's how people are set up for success to do well as investors and users in crypto. And another, another question is like, uh, you building nonsense and you have the front row seats to see like everything happen uh, in the, within the space. So from your point of view, like, uh, We, we are talking about like DeFi summer, GameFi summer, and meme coin like booming around here. So, so from your point of view, like what is the the net major trend that, that can like direct the, the growth of the of, of the ecosystem? Like we we used to see like for example, I see Infinity is start all the GameFi summer as well. So what do you think? Like what is the net big thing for the crypto industry? Yeah, that's a hard question. Um, I mean, you see you see a few different trends, right? And I've been, I feel like I've been saying this in interviews for the last two, three years, that like Web3 gaming season is coming soon. Uh, but now I actually feel like, you know, you, you see games that are being launched, like Cypher is a good example. They have a booth right behind us here with Ather Labs, uh, and it's a Vietnamese project. Um, you're seeing uh, other games in the Ronin ecosystem that are launching, that are not built by the Sky Mavis team, like Axie Infinity was, but like Pixels, for example. And so I think the whole Web3 gaming season uh, meme is going to be playing out you know, over the next months. Uh, and it, it's starting, starting to take shape. At the same time, there are so many games that you could get a bit like dilution of attention. So that's one risk. Um, you're seeing like a bit of a trend with celebrity coins, right? Yeah. Uh, I will admit I have not spent very much time on it yet. Uh, Some sort of meme coin, another form of meme coin, right? Yeah, correct. I think that's, you could think of it as like culture coins or something, right? Where everyone knows that the coin doesn't really do anything. There's no real utility. And maybe to some extent you could put, you know, things like NFTs, you know, in this category. Um, you know, they're more a sort of cultural artifact and there's a community that forms around these. So NFTs, meme coins, and maybe even celebrity coins, you could argue are all in that same category. Uh, on the more boring side, you know, you're seeing uh, real world assets and tokenized treasuries, for example, really growing very healthily among many different protocols and chains. So I think that's a good one because it adds like more sort of a, a basis of, um, you know, what you might consider sustainable yield to the whole DeFi ecosystem. In DeFi summer in 2020, you could argue that lots of the yields were unsustainable because they came from tokens that were being created out of nothing and those tokens were being bought by someone. That's how you got the yields. Uh, I think you could imagine now with staking yields from, say, Lido and tokenized treasury yields, you actually have more of a sustainable basis of yields that can help make the whole DeFi ecosystem also more sustainable. So, yeah. Well, that's really insightful. Yeah, thank you a lot for that. Um, so let's talk about nonsense. Like, uh, I, I I know that you guys have been like there's a lot of like interesting uh, feature. Uh, myself from from Coin team also and Carol's team. Uh, we 
we, we also have the, the professional uh, on our center as well. Uh, but like for the people who are still looking around there, so um, what, uh, what, what feature we can expect uh, in the future? And like what do you recommend, like how to start with Nansen from today? Yeah, so it's pretty exciting because in the next few weeks, we're going to be switching off Nansen 1 and going all in on Nansen 2. And that means our, t our team can dedicate all their attention to Nansen 2 going forward. And so, for those not aware, we, we started rolling out Nansen 2 late last year. And over these last months, we've been migrating over features and we've also been rolling out new features to Nansen 2. So some of the things that you can expect, number one is uh, Solana support. But very, very good Solana support. Like one thing we've, yeah, one, one thing that one thing that we've we've realized is like, Solana is actually a very challenging chain to work with from an infrastructure and technology perspective. Maybe not building, you know, DApps on it, but if you want to do anything that requires ingesting data and things like that, there's just so much throughput, so much data, and it's not EVM. So you have to build a lot of new bespoke technology for it. So to make a long story short. We've spent a ton of time on this, and we're pretty sure that we're going to have the best analytics product for Solana out literally in the next, I'm not going to say weeks, let's say, let's say months, but very, very soon. That's one thing to be excited about. The other thing I would say is that we're bringing portfolio tracking into Nansen 2, also in a matter of months. And that means you can track all of your holdings across all of the chains you use and L2s you use in one place, and it integrates with the rest of Nansen for the on-chain analytics stuff. So these two things are probably the, the ones that are top of mind for me in terms of new features that are coming. But we're also integrating much more AI into the product. So one feed, uh, feedback we often get from customers is they don't really understand what they're seeing in the product. So you might get a signal that says, hey, you know, someone bought $5 million worth of this token and there's smart money. And people ask, you know, what's smart money? and Who actually bought this? Well, actually, but, uh, friendly, uh, an interesting part in here, like in Vietnam, there are some really popular community. They translate as a from Nansen yes. to the other people. So, <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah, you know, it, right? it, that, that is that is very funny, right? And it and it's on the one hand, it's very cool that they do that, and it shows there's value value in doing it. On the other hand, it also kind of shows that our product could be clearer. Yeah. And so we actually think that using AI more in the product to help you explain stuff is one way to do it. So if you had buttons that you could click, so you break down actually which smart money addresses did this, and you immediately get that out, then we think you can better understand like the so what. You know, here's the piece of information, like what do I do about it? Like what's the so what? So, you know, these, these are some things that we're excited about now. Um, and, you know, maybe in addition to Solana, we're also adding a lot more new chains. Uh, just a couple of days ago, we announced Blast. And that's now live for Nansen users. Uh, so that means we have very good coverage of L2s. In fact, if you look at the top six L2s, all of them are supported on Nansen. And if you look at the top 10, I think we have seven. So there's three we want to add in. Uh, but you know, we have really, really great coverage. And we're going to get even better coverage of chains going forward. Oh, that, that really cool. That's a lot of things. I, I can see that you guys put a lot of work in, like, in everything of this. Yeah, so really exciting to, to see that. Okay, so I think that's, that is pretty long. So I would like to, you, would you like to send some words for, for Vietnamese community? We're looking for uh, your presenting here and like from looking for Nansen. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, like I said in the beginning, in 2019, I was here working with Axie Infinity. And uh, it ended up being one of the first portfolio uh, angel investments I did for my own portfolio. And it was a fantastic investment. Um, but the reason I did that investment was actually because I was so bullish on Vietnamese entrepreneurship and how you have this hustle mindset and culture in Vietnam where you know, I would work at Aminotes and I would see everyone there had their own side business, yeah. you know, whether it's selling something on Facebook or you know, whatever it is. And so this kind of entrepreneurial spirit was really inspiring to me. And it's something that makes me really bullish uh, on all of Vietnam for. And so I hope to invest in more Vietnamese startups going forward. And of course, hope to have more Vietnamese users on our platform as well. Uh, but yeah, it's super awesome to be here. So thanks for inviting me. Yeah. Thank you for your time today. And please follow Nansen on social media and also try out Nansen today and catch up with the new uh, on-chain movement on the industry. All right, yeah, thank you for your time today. Right, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.